In what is perhaps the most concrete proposal to date, Cable and Wireless says there may be one way for the government to regain controlling share of the company. Carissa Robinson tells us that Prime Minister Perry Christie has revealed the possible deal maker would include the extension of a decades-long monopoly. Government lead negotiator Franklin Wilson today reaffirmed the direction indicated by the Prime Minister as far as the BTC buyback negotiations are concerned. Prime Minister Perry Christie revealed yesterday that cable and wireless has requested an extension of its exclusivity for wireless service in return for 2% of shares, giving the government a 51% majority in the company. Prime Minister Christie was speaking at CIBC First Caribbean International Bank's Infrastructure Conference Thursday when he told reporters that anything is possible. Here's what the government lead negotiator had to say. The principal uh, has reached a stage where um, uh, the parties are saying, all right, fine, what may be tradable as a condition for what the government of the Bahamas seeks is tragic and sad. Um, I want to repeat it again because I honestly believe that it's in the national interest of this country for the country to know just how badly this process of, of sale was, was administered. And I think a lot of people who were involved with it owe the country deep apologies. When it comes to criticisms concerning progress of the negotiations, Mr. Wilson echoed the Prime Minister's concern that the deal must be done quickly, but he urged the public to be patient. President of the Bahamas Communications and Public Officers Union, Bernard Evans, has said that he's not pleased with the progress being made. We are pursuing that through means which balance various national interests. As important as that is, it's important that this be done with a decency and order, uh, so as not to destroy uh, confidence of uh, the investment, international investment community in the country, and so it must be done with a certain degree of decency and order. So the negotiations take more time than happens if you were just going with a gun to say, look, give me 2% and take it or leave it, and so on and so forth. It still is uh, incumbent upon us as negotiators, while we meet our public responsibility, to do so in a way which does not totally disarm us of any capacity to really negotiate. If you have to publicly disclose all of your cards, what are you negotiating with? You're giving the other man a tremendous advantage. So I appeal to the public to just um, have a degree of confidence and trust that we're doing the best we can.